I am Lutfu Kitabci, I'm the managing director of Vodafone Smart Tech. And Valentina? Yeah, I'm Valentina Contini, I work at Porsche Engineering, I'm uh, actually a whole vehicle engineer. We're talking about smart cities, mobility, connected healthcare, uh, sustainability being a lot better uh, with the power of connectivity. But I think the foundation that you will find in all of this that is, that is connectivity that is transforming uh, society and helping transform the planet. Ultimately, it's not just about the personal devices when we talk about, uh, when we talk about connectivity transforming, helping transform uh, the planet. Because it's, it's, uh, I talk about this whole systems thinking, that is the personal devices, the industrial devices, what cities and governments use in terms of the device and how they connect each other through the connectivity that is the foundation uh, of it all. And I think one of the things that we talk about, how do consumers more have connectivity, I think ultimately with the pandemic over the last two years we've realized how important connectivity is in our lives and consumers starting to uh, really notice the importance of quality and reliable connectivity and that's that's how we how we see it we've seen the change uh, from uh, uh, conventional cars to electric cars and electric cars are more software based and just a very basic example, uh, updates over the air that we are absolutely used to with every other electronic device that we use will be also part of, a, of, a, of electric cars. Eh? And this, uh, this doesn't work if you don't have fast connectivity because the update of a, of a smartphone takes a couple hours. The update of a car is something of, of a different size. It's, it, it can, it, with slow speed internet, it takes maybe one day, so that's not, absolutely not, not doable. We started seeing things already now with electric mobility. We see that a car now is uh, more software based, meaning that it needs updates as well, and over the air updates are, are necessary and uh, they can happen only if you have real and fast connectivity. In the future, we go in a, a step further with uh, um, autonomous mobility that is gonna to, going to be really autonomous only if cars are connected between each other and to the infrastructure and to all other actors in in traffic so that's going to be the real the real deal for the next year AIs can be trained in a, in a better way, getting so much more data uh, in the same time, in the same moment. So let's think about one car that is collecting data and is learning from this data, or one car and the 10 cars around are seeing the same things, collecting this data and all learning from all this data. They, they can take completely different decisions. I think ultimately it's going to come down to uh, what value they get out of it, starting with the perceived value and, uh, and what ultimately also secondly is how it blends into consumers' lives. So whether it's how it blends in, in your home, uh, how it blends in what you're wearing, how it blends in what you're holding in your hand. So we'll see that uh, both the value, the utility value you get out of the device and the connectivity and secondly how it blends into your your clothing your device your home etc i would say that we will we'll see a couple of things i think if you look at uh, the, the report uh, we're, we're expecting that uh, av consumers will have average 15 devices so we're talking about 120 billion devices uh, in the world and consumers will actually have uh, 4,800 interactions per day with connected devices. So that's almost like a, every 20 seconds you're having an interaction uh, during the day. And those interactions doesn't necessarily have to be the devices that the consumers are carrying with them, but also the devices that they are. So when Valentina talked about the, uh, the car, multiple cars, uh, the, 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 the billboard you might be uh, seeing on the road, uh, the bus you're uh, getting in the morning, all these devices will be connected and if you are able to really share the data 
in a thoughtful and ethical manner and able to harness that data, then you could actually not just create value for the individual consumer, but the society and planet as a whole. And I absolutely think that one uh, key point would be if this technology is taking our time away, we are not going to want to use it, while if this technology helps us give us back uh, time, then we will de le lean into that, absolutely. The transformation that we're talking about uh, can only happen if consumers trust that they, they, they trust to give their data because the uh, what Valentina talked about multiple cars but also imagine that the consumer wearable might be also talking to that car and that the, the whole system learns uh, and the only way that this is going to happen if consumers really trust uh, the, the, the sharing their data so as brands we have the responsibility uh, in multiple ways. One is that we need to design the products and the services that we provide with privacy and data protection in mind. Secondly, we have to be able to give the consumers to tell them what data we're going to use, how are we going to use it, in what way that they can make use of it, of it by sharing that data, and lastly, how we're going to protect it. I think these four elements are key to ensure that customers actually trust how their data is going to be used. It's absolutely necessary to ensure privacy and that people are actually seeing what is happening with their data and what they get out of uh, sharing their data. They, have, they need to be free to choose if they, if they want to share, how much they want to share and for what uh, otherwise. There are a lot, a lot <laughs> of things changing. So for sure uh, it would be for what we see now, electric mainly, uh, but there will be uh, other different technologies that will be used uh, uh, for different use cases. Um, what we see is that if we're not going to drive anymore, uh, we can use the time in a different way. So it would look more like like uh, your home or like a office, or it, it can be just whatever you want to see. And if technology goes fast enough, it can be just a, a blank slate, and depending on the person jumping in uh, with, uh, with their wearable, just holograms show something different and allow you to do something different, yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. That's a big question. I am definitely, I do cannot take a position on that. Uh, it's, there are too many moving aspects, and I mean, you know, governments have a, a big here is the a whole ecosystem that is going to change. There are a lot of actors have their say in this, and it's going to be a challenge. And hopefully, we'll find a solution that will work the same way in uh, in the world, and not just every country takes its own decision. I could talk for hours for this. <laughs> um, also, it the the engineer uh, engineer answer is it depends on the use case. Mm, absolutely. What is my dream? My dream is I just wake up, uh, I know what I have to do, I have a, a wearable device that realizes what I'm thinking and plans my day and then I get out of the door and uh, the, the right, the right mean of transportation is where it's there waiting for me and I don't have to do anything. That's the dream. It's absolutely necessary for this. Uh, and this is, um, in the making since a lot of years and it's still not that not that close uh, a really a real ai that thinks like a human being is very far away from now but an ai that learns from what you do and takes uh, decisions made uh, uh, on what learned from you that's still already not that far I'm also wearing a smart kids watch Neo. Uh, I think we're first seeing uh, wearables usually on the wrist today that actually help in consumers to stay in touch. And the staying in touch is a wider concept. It can be staying in touch with your loved one, so between the parent and the kid. It's staying it in touch with your heart rate. It's staying in touch with your exercise, so giving you inform necessary information. But we can see that this wearable technology will become a lot more uh, subtle and more integrated 
into what were really wearable, wearing, yeah? So we would be seeing potentially uh, connected uh, shoes uh, so that you don't have to look at your steps from your uh, watch, but actually you'll be looking at your connect steps from your uh, actually connected uh, uh, shoes or, um, or the, uh, the, the jeans you're wearing or the jacket you're wearing. But ultimately, again, we have to not only think about the individual benefits of these wearable devices. I think we need to always think about the wider ecosystem of society and planet and that how this connectivity is not just going to uh, benefit the individual, but the, ben uh, the wider society and planet as a whole. People are a lot more uh, noticing a lot more and paying a lot more attention to the sustainability element, how it's helping society. So I think people will be a lot more careful and choiceful in terms of that tech, not just uh, benefiting them, but benefiting society as a whole. Connectivity will enable you to, as a consumer, when you're buying something, will be able to tell you the whole value chain. Yeah? So how sustainable is that value chain? Secondly, you will also see in the report, the Connected Consumer 2030 report, that there is a research that shows that more and more consumers today are willing to pay a premium for more sustainable and green products. That green premium is actually con more consumers are willing to pay for it. But that premium over time, with the advancement of technology, with the advances of connectivity, that premium will actually become less and less because technology is just going to improve and will continue to focus on making more sustainable products. So what is what we see as potentially a barrier today uh, is not going to be a barrier in the next five to ten years. I think a generational thing. If we look at, at younger people, uh, they have a different uh, a different relationship with money and with technology. So and with ownership, for example. So uh, not owning something might, in the long run, cost you more. But in, in that in that moment, not really. So they, on one side, they don't realize that they're paying more. But this also helped them to make a, a, a more conscious decision and not looking only at how much does it cost me. Yeah, and maybe just start, I think we talk a lot about circular economy, regenerative society, and I think we will see newer generations probably taking a lot more of that circular economy. So the second hand concept is, is, is this whole ownership concept, probably the new generation will, will, I mean we're seeing more and more people buying into that circular economy. We can all see a world where uh, the, the physical and the virtual world blending more and more, uh, ultimately creating more value for the consumer, for the business and for the society uh, as a whole. And for that metaverse that we're talking about to happen, you need to have that ultimately that fast, lower latency technology as the foundation uh, enabling it. I did luxury car, I did luxury motorbikes, I did luxury travel, but my favorite, I'm Italian, it's luxury food. And I don't know how much it will change, but yeah, there are some technologies that can make it pretty interesting in the future, yes. It's a good one, the food. <laughs> Time, I think, is the ultimate luxury that I think about when I think about it. And we all talked about doing this interview throughout uh, today in the report. I think technology, I'm hoping it is today, is gonna give us back more time uh, so that we can actually do things that we, we enjoy.